Containers exploded onto the scene with Docker and they've been growing fast. Container technology promises to improve IT operations through cloud-native applications that run seamlessly on physical and virtual infrastructure. And containerized applications have all their needed services bundled up and portable. That way they can spin up and down as needed. And we have orchestration tools like Kubernetes, which handles scheduling for container clusters and, and management for workloads. But containers have not crossed into mainstream adoption. So Lauren, why is this? Well, a container has everything it needs to run an application, such as an Apache web server. It uses the underlying OS kernel from the server where it resides, so it's really lightweight and meant for scalability. And more containers are added and removed as necessary, and while it's possible to do this manually, mistakes are easy to make. So container orchestration tools have stepped in to cover this, and Kubernetes has become the front runner. Now, the basic architecture is a little like an SDN. There are masters, more than one for redundancy, that act as the controller for the whole cluster. The masters spin up nodes, which make up the cloud-native applications that drive your business. Now, conceptually, this is easy, but since Kubernetes is open source, there are literally dozens of projects just to enable you to do things with container networking or security, storage. Today, we introduce the Cisco Container Platform a turnkey solution that simplifies the entire lifecycle management of clusters. Suhail will be here to show us how apps are spun up and down, how it scales. First, however, Kieran joins Rob in the lounge to kick us off. Many of the technologies powering containers are open source. Kieran, welcome to TechWise TV. Uh, let's start with anyone that may not be that familiar with containers. How do you define them? Containers are a lightweight, abstraction okay. for packaging applications along with its dependencies. So compare them to virtual machines. Virtual machine has a copy of the guest operating system, the application, and all the libraries that the applications need right. packaged together. With containers, you don't have a copy of the guest operating system. It's just the application and the libraries and the dependencies that it needs. So that makes it very lightweight. You can easily, therefore, start it up, down. It consumes a lot less memory because it doesn't have the operating system to go with it. What that means from a DevOps perspective is two things. Number one is agility, mm -hmm. and number two is scale. Like okay. you can go from dev to test to production rollouts very, very quickly. You can have multiple rollouts to production every hour if you want, compared to weeks of waiting in the virtual machine scenario in the past. Secondly, you can scale bits and pieces of the application. You, you now start thinking of designing an application not in a monolithic way, but in more of a microservices-based way. So you can selectively scale a specific service that the application okay. needs. Developers can just focus on that service as opposed to building or worrying about the rest of the application set. So there's that notion of simplicity, um, lightweight uh, modularity yes. uh, that has really been an appeal. And as I mentioned, these things are, are open source. They've come from that community. So just to make sure that we've got this addressed right from the get-go, the Cisco Container Platform, what is it that Cisco's doing here and, and how does it play with that? Yeah, if an enterprise were to run containers, there's a lot of infrastructure setup that has to happen to make sure that you can actually start running your application set. That infrastructure includes setting up storage, setting up networking, figuring out which operating system to use, who am I going to get support from, all of that is now taken care of with Cisco Container Platform. It's a turnkey, ready to go, Cisco tax supported container platform in a box so that the customers now just have to worry about running their applications and not have to worry about setting up the infrastructure that goes so with it. So this starts to speak to the reality of we've created something really cool in software environment, but then there becomes the reality of saying, hey, this is something that really is going to help people in, in production. It's going to touch customers. It, it needs to work for big organizations or just any organization that's now going to depend on it. But you're saying more elements are then required, so it gets beyond the cool technology. Um, but as we look at the complexity of containers and using them at scale, we have things like Kubernetes that Google had come out with. Um, but Kubernetes has been a very popular open source, and we've also hitched our wagon with Kubernetes on the container platform. Is that correct? Those two are part and parcel the same? Yes, Kubernetes is an integral component of the Cisco container platform. Okay, so if we have Kubernetes and we've got Dockerized containers uh, in terms of how we are building these now to say this is the way you should be building applications to make them more flexible to get the agility that you need, we can make it turnkey. Is that everything? Are we really doing something unique from the Cisco perspective? Yeah, I mean, the fact that, so if you, if you think of how much time and energy one spends, an IT organization spends in setting up an infrastructure where you actually run your application sets. Think of that as a circle. Okay. Draw a big concentric circle around it. That okay. is the amount of time and energy that you're spending uh, on the people that uh. are spending actually time uh, setting up storage. You know, figuring out should I set up distributed storage or should I set up should I use NFS? Uh, what networking should I use? You know, what 
you all know, those follow-on uh, questions that start exactly. coming in when the reality begins hitting you. Right, and then at the end of the day, who's going to support it? And the operating system that I'm using there, you know, am I using a supported operating system? Who am I going to buy support for the operating system for? All of those questions, you don't have to think about it when you're using Cisco Container Platform. Our goal is to abstract that away so that the customers just get a ready-to-go solution and they just focus on running application sets. So you kind of, in okay. a way, start treating, um, uh, once you have Cisco, Cisco Container Platform set up and, and ready to go, you start thinking of it as if it was a Kubernetes that is managed on a public cloud, for example, but it's just on your premises. Interesting, so uh, speaking of that came from Google, we have a Google partnership. How does this play with what we're doing with Google and Cisco's overall cloud strategy? Yeah, uh, the overall uh, Google-Cisco partnership announcement, I, you know, if, if you were to break down that solution, uh, you could probably break it down into like three components, okay. uh, three use cases. The first one is if an application is running on a public cloud and it wants to access certain components that are on-premises, such as your Oracle database, for example, then you can go through the Apigee uh, product as a service broker to, to access um, your Oracle database on-prem. If you have an application, number two, running on-premises mm -hmm. that needs to access certain machine learning capabilities that are available in uh, Google's cloud, then uh, you can go to the Google Service Fabric to make sure that uh, the app that is running on-prem can actually access certain features that, and capabilities that are available on the public okay. cloud side. Number three is if you want to provide a, uh, a consistent experience so that the developers just have to worry about running the application and the, the substrate, which is essentially Kubernetes, enables them to run the application on public cloud or on premises with ease, then that's where the Cisco Container Platform comes in. It provides that on-prem uh, Kubernetes experience that is very similar to what they would find in managed public cloud environments, so that now the developer just has to focus on running the application and the underlying, uh, the solution you know, takes care of you know, creating a Kubernetes experience on premises, tying the okay. network from a, the multiple clouds from a networking security perspective, et cetera. So we're coming out with this on Hyperflex initially, part of the turnkey that obviously encapsulates a lot of things, makes things very simple, because we have a lot of things addressed, especially from a hardware perspective when we talk about how we deploy Hyperflex, but we've also taken ACI and the networking component into uh, account here as well, right? Yes, absolutely. The first cut uh, of the Cisco Container Platform is going to be available in Hyperflex. Okay. Um, the, uh, you know, what that solves is the storage part of the problem. The compute and storage now available as part of the hyper-converged appliance. Hyperflex, if you remember, comes from our Spring Path acquisition. Exactly. Uh, so storage. But, but that's yep. one part of the puzzle. Uh, you know, there's still networking, you know, the switches and other things that, that have to be available in your environment. Uh, to, and uh, with ACI, we've got a nice integration as well because we use the Contiv uh, open source project as part right. of this okay. uh, Cisco Container Platform solution that makes sure that the networking related policies around you know segmentation or bandwidth throttling etc that you set up uh, on the content side uh, take effect and are implemented by your ACI uh, fabric as well. Very very cool so final point that you'd like to make? Yeah I mean uh, around Cisco Container Platform the only thing that the, the takeaway that I would expect uh, the audience to walk away from is that don't try to spend a lot of time building the pieces of the puzzle from an infrastructure perspective with Cisco Container Platform, it's Cisco supported, all of the underlying infrastructure pieces are taken care of for you. You just focus on running your applications in a similar manner that you would on public cloud. I like that. All right, thank you so much. Guys, how simple can we make it? Well, Lauren looks like is ready in the lab. Lauren? That's right, how simple can we make it? Really easy to use. We want to make Kubernetes boring again, <laughs> picking a line from KubeCon. Boring again or boring for the first time? Boring again. <laughs> right. It needs to be simple each and every time. IT guy brings it up. So it's deploying an OVA, basically. Let's see it. Yeah, great. So what I have showing here is vSphere, client running. I already have loaded the OVA file, and I've launched it. I bootstrapped the Cisco Container Platform. We have an IP address here. I'm going to just go to that IP address. I already clicked into it, and this is what the dashboard looks like. We have a number of clusters already running, and it's simple, it's clean. Yeah, look at that. There, there's barely anywhere to click. Um, deploying OVA is easy. Admi admins have done it you know, for years now. Give it a management IP, go to the GUI. I want to create a cluster, right? How do yep. I do that? Great point. So creating a cluster, there's just one single blue button. It's as simple as that. And you have a set of steps you have to go through, enter in some basic information, network settings, and, and the like. So I'm just going to go ahead quickly and start running a new cluster. I'm going to call it test three, and we're using Cube Spray. The next step is entering additional information here. I'm just going to go ahead and update it. Okay. 
So once we fill this up, we go to advanced settings, and we enter in the username and password. And then you can increase, you can elect to increase the number of uh, worker nodes here, or you can leave it the same, just leaving it the same. And worker nodes are, again, the thing that are actually running the application, right? So it's got the Docker uh, container or whatever yes. container, two proxy, things like that. That's right, and okay. OS also, yes. So now we're in the master configuration. This is where you can also increase the number of master nodes if you choose to. And these are the Kubernetes masters that are actually the control part of it, right, of the cluster? That's right. Okay. And finally, we can review all the information we put in. It looks good, looks pretty nice. And we do finish, and in a few seconds, we shall see it launching. There you go. And you can see it working there. So the, the main point of this, right, to make it more turnkey, to make it easier for operators or IT operations to run so that, that devs can kind of do their job of creating applications, right? That's right. And Kubernetes containers in general are meant to make scaling more easy. So how do I do that from this GUI? Good point. Let's say you have, a, you have developers who are getting their applications ready for Good Friday, and they know traffic's coming. Or they Black to, Friday. Or Black Friday. Right. <laughs> and they want, to, they want to scale up really quickly. All you've got to do is just click on the Edit button for the right cluster where your application is deployed. And you just update the number of nodes, make it five. And you just click Save. And you can see the cluster getting updated. OK, so now that I've created the Kubernetes cluster, how do you go about creating the actual application or deploying the application? Excellent question. So I'm going to show you a little bit under the covers here. Here's a command line we run to launch an application. And we use kubectl create. And it's all simple. Just launch the YAML file for the application. You can see this application is called Sock Shop. There's a namespace being created. And it's running through. And once it's done, we're just going to check and see if we've got all the namespaces up. So we run a kubectl get namespaces. And we see it's active in the bottom, sock shop. So now I'm going to go get pods to see you know, if it's running, uh, it's up and running. And yes, we see it's running. Um, so these are all the actual pods that are running, the, yep. the worker bees, if you will, to make yep. sure that you know, all the different microservices are running. That's to, right. So to you do can see weave socks. Some of them are actually getting created. Right now, and in a few minutes, yep, there we go. It's, they're all up. Perfect. All right, so now uh, what does I, it look I like? have an application, yeah. right, up and running. So let's go. Let's take a look at what it, what the application looks like. I'm going to go back to this window, and I'm going to the same address, and voila, that's socks. Well, that's awesome. I, I love how turnkey this is, how to the point, really, the things that operators need to run the business, run the application. That's right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Suhail. You're welcome. The Cisco Container Platform is built to simplify the entire life cycle and management of container clusters. Containerized applications built within this model will ensure you can run them on any cloud. Thanks for watching.